Hey guys, welcome back. It is May 3rd. Adam Flowers here, it's Mob Vlog. Mr. Red Wimet, how are you doing today, sir? I am doing fine. Thank you. Fantastic. That's good to hear. It sounds like Duchess is doing well, too. I hear a little groan in the background. <laughs> She's munching. <laughs> munching. All right. So uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to have a great day today. A lot of fun. I see you guys are active in the comments like all oh, crazy in the comments. Don Cheech, uh, uh, Julie M, Scott H. Leanne, rolling along. Colada. Leanne, everybody's here. Julie M. Uh, I said that one already. Uh, Russ Jackson, good to see you guys. Outfit Boss, uh, hello, everybody. Tommy Bridges, I hope you're having a great day. And uh, we're going to have some fun. We're going to talk about Dennis Farina and the Chicago Outfit, of course. You know, we ran a poll for you guys. We put up a poll, got like 450 votes on this poll. And we said, what do you want to hear about? Theology? You want to hear about the Chicago Outfit? You want to hear about serial killers? You want to hear about... Chicago Insane Asylums, which I thought was pretty pretty cool. Y'all voted for Chicago Outfit, okay? Number one. Number two came in was Insane Asylums, then Serial Killers, and lastly, God. Interesting. It's an interesting crowd we have here. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, are a very eclectic group that really don't care about anything except the Chicago outfit. So we're just going to take little pieces of the Chicago outfit and uh, and talk about it. Patrick O'Neill, it's good to see you again. Thanks for tuning back in. Michael Graham, Mobbed Up Podcast, good to have you. Uh, and, of course, John. There's a John on the channel. <laughs> what happened to the police sheriff, I'm guessing, John Oiza? I, I don't have any idea what that even is about. Um, but we're going to talk about Dennis Farina. So we're going to start on that topic and we'll move off of that topic as we go along. So uh, I'm sure we'll move off the topic because we always do here on my vlog. Isn't that right, Red? That's right. Red. Pab doesn't like uh, it, but we do it. <laughs> what's that? Oh, Pab, Pab doesn't, doesn't like it. Like it. Pab, we're going to try and stay on topic just for you, buddy. All right. We really are. <laughs> and in the spirit of that, Pab, we're going to ask this question first. Was Jerry Springer connected to the outfit? No. <laughs> I saw the greatest meme. I saw the greatest meme the other day. And it was uh, it was um, um, uh, uh, Jerry Springer. And, and it was uh, and it was um, God on one side of him and Mother Mary on the other side. And he said, now we're going to bring the father and Joseph to have a little talk. I thought that was great. You think uh, people are going to fight at Jerry's funeral, Red? <laughs> okay, so anyway. I don't know. I, I, I don't know who would show up, man. The, the, really, the, the Jerry Springer, the, uh, so look, we're, we're going to get on to this. So crime story. Thank you very Jim, much, Scott H. Jim Jager, for that topic. Jim Jager says, uh, when Dennis Farina was on Law and Order, his character would talk about the Chicago outfit and that he was born in the Patch neighborhood in Chicago. I started to watch that. Um, I started to watch that. And uh, I've gotten through, I think, four episodes now of it. I think it's a great show. So, yeah, let's, thanks for staying on topic, Scott H. Did you watch Crime Story? I watched the whole thing. What an ending. Ah, uh, see, now I haven't finished it. I started it, but I haven't. But you guys told me it was really good. And, uh, and, and I liked, you know, I'll be honest, with you, I like Farina's character in the, in the show. I, I do. He's like a tough cop, you know. I, I do. I just got it, but he's a kind of a wise guy. guy. <laughs> yeah, but do you think? Do you think in real life was he? In real life, was he? You know, really was he? He was a he was a crooked cop, wasn't he? Yes, yes. And in real life, he played yeah. himself. He was he was uh, on the on the on the screen. He played just how he was in real life. Um, yeah, I that's what he was like times in life. Place. Wow. Um, let's see. So Bobby Bag of Donuts said that uh, Dennis Farina and I went to the same bank. Went to the same bank? Hmm. I tell you that I got to hang out at the watering hole. What's the watering he hole? He used to hang out at the, the watering hole, Billy Kent's place. 
Burton Place. You were saying a lot of those guys hung out there, actors at uh, Big Shots Not at Burton Chicago. Place, but down the street at Billy Kent's place. When he moved, he he opened up uh, the Bird's Nest on uh, Division and Wall Street. Um, Did, <laughs> that's a good question down here. Yes. <laughs> that, Dennis Farina's relative was Alderman Farina, who was not well liked. No, none of the family is good, well, well liked that I know of. No, I think Michael's saying that Dennis Farina's relative was Alderman Farina, who was not well liked. So he was related to Alderman Farina. Did you? Are you ever? I he never even heard of him. He was juiced into the department. I'll tell you that much. He worked in. Uh, he worked in VCD, Vice Control Division. Um, okay. So, uh, we're trying to stay on topic guys. I'm reading through these and I'm, I'm just trying to stay on top. I'm not, I'm not, I not think he was on the job for about 18 years and then he went to, okay, <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. Did we talk over you? No, no, no. I, I just, I was just saying, I'm not reading all these comments. Some of them are off topic. So we're trying to stay on topic for Pab. He, uh, he was uh, worked for VCD, Vice Control Division, and somebody just asked you on a comment, "Did he abuse prisoners?" Yes, he abused everybody. <laughs> That's uh, a tough Scott guy. Age asking about the prisoners. Dennis Farina looked just like Billy Bats and Goodfellas. Farina, and let me tell you who: Farina, Frank Vincent, and Bobby Lucchetti. Those three guys looked all the same. Seriously, they 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 all. It's like they had too much hair. Not that I'm, <laughs> not that I'm jealous or nothing. I'm just saying it's it's like the hairline grew down to their eyebrows or something. You know, just oh, so much hair up there. God, to run your fingers through that kind of hair. Oh, man, <laughs> it's just too much. You know what I mean, Red? You with me, Red? Yeah. You with yes, Red? Guys, Red's not with me. He's not. No, Red's reading comments over there. I can see this. That's what he's doing. It's got to be what he's doing. Hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on. Let me turn a few things on here so that uh, we can hear everything. I got a caller calling in. So let me get, uh, I wasn't set up for it. And uh, hey, I'm sorry. I texted you to tell you I was going to call. No, that's all right. Hey, everybody. It's Joe Collada. And give me just a second so I can put him on the speaker so we can hear him. Uh, so we can hear him clearly. And uh, give me just a second here, Joe. And um, let me see. I got to disconnect this one, maybe. Yeah, let's turn that off. So <clears throat> we got Joe Collada on the phone. Everybody, give us just a minute. We're going to have him on. Special guest right now. Um, so Bobby Bacon have... says the great uh, Frank, Frank Collada used to say, that Dennis Farina was a jagoff. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> he was. <laughs> Not well like that guy, I guess, huh? Not by me. Uh -huh. Okay. I almost have this paired. You know, when you, when you get a new phone, you have to like reconnect everything to it. And I just hadn't uh, reconnected this yet. So just a second. There we go. I, I had to put this thing in pairing mode. Unbelievable. I, yeah. Pair. There we go. Okay. I got it. All right, everybody. We have Joe Collada on the phone. Hi, Joe. Hi. How you doing, everybody? Uh, I want to say something about Dennis Farino, okay? Okay. I knew Dennis. I went out to dinner with him once in Scottsdale, Arizona. One of my very, very good friends worked with Dennis. And it wasn't a VCD unit. It was called the CIU. Criminal Investigation Unit. Okay. And Dennis wasn't born in the patch on Grand Avenue. Dennis was from the north side, a Sicilian neighborhood. Uh, I believe it might have been St. Michael's Parish by North Avenue. Old town. That neighborhood. That's where Dennis was from. Dennis's father was a doctor. Uh, Dennis, now I knew Dennis, and, and like I say, my good friend was very good friends with Dennis. Dennis, from what I know, and I knew a lot of burglars at the time, Dennis never physically abused anybody. Dennis was a gentleman, 
Uh, he never abused anybody. He was a, a nice guy. He was a class act. He was a fun guy. In fact, he used to get haircuts, not by the shop I worked at, by another friend of mine, Vince DePino, before he moved out of Chicago. He lived in uh, Michigan, and he lived in Scottsdale, Dennis. That's where he ended up. That's where he wound up. But uh, Dennis, a class act, from what I know, never physically, regardless of what you hear from people that call in, unless they were arrested by him, and I never heard about it through other police that he worked with. Because I, I used to cut a, a few guys here that worked with him at the CIU. And uh, he was legit. Dennis was a legit policeman. He never hurt anybody. He never, and I never heard of him taking a dime or anything like that. That's the Dennis I know. Okay. You may hear, you may hear other stories from other people. Sure. And he probably did go on Burton Place over there on Wall Street because uh, that was near his neighborhood where he lived at. But uh, I'm sure he... I'm sure he never took a dime from anybody around there. That I, I mean, I, I'd almost bet on it because he was pretty legit. In fact, when he did that show, Crimes, uh, not Crime Story, Thief, that's where he got his start, the movie Thief. Dad asked my brother, this guy, uh, policeman, uh, Saron was the policeman's name. I can't think of his first name right now. It, it, not related to Jack Saron. He had asked, my brother was in uh, in Vegas, I think, at the time, and they asked him if he wanted to be a consultant in the movie. You know what I mean? But he didn't do it. That was Crime Story. That's where Dennis got his start uh, with in the Michael Mann Crime Stories. But legit guy, as far as I could tell you, legit and not physically abusive. What's now? Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, was he, was he, do you think he was connected to anybody in the outfit as far no, as, here, you know. Here, I'm going to tell you, I want to tell you something about connections. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows somebody if mm -hmm. you're Italian. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. He grew up in an Italian neighborhood and there were wise guys that came from his neighborhood. Sure. Did he know him? He probably did. Was he connected as far as being a wise guy? Absolutely not. Right. I mean, you know, I have friends of mine that are a retired policeman and they knew my brother real good. Were they connected? No, they right. weren't connected. They knew people. Here's how Chicago is. Everybody knows somebody and everybody, I mean, you want to say they're connected because they know somebody you could, but they're not really connected. You know what I mean? Right. I get you. I hear you. Yeah. You could, you could say, well, I know this guy and he yeah. knows this guy who's, you know, does these things, but that doesn't mean, but people sometimes like they think that they, they are because of that. Exactly. But Dennis, as far as connected, no, he wasn't connected. Would he give a tip to somebody? No, he wouldn't. He worked in a, a unit where they specialize in, a, in arresting uh, people. You know what I mean? So he, that's what he did. He, he, he went after the criminal. He worked for the CIU, Criminal Investigative Unit. Uh, in the, which it was a sophisticated, uh, a real sophisticated uh, unit as far as the police went. You know, the, they worked on all the highline criminals. And Dennis was part of that group. And uh, I'm sure he made a lot, a lot of arrests. And if he was connected, he wouldn't have made them arrest. So You know what I mean? Sure. So, so cops nowadays... Cops have to be so careful as to how they handle the every suspect and case and whatnot. Back in those days, and when I say those days, we're talking like the 70s, cops were a little rougher with people. When today's standards might be considered, you know, being abusive to somebody. Yeah? Maybe, you know, maybe. But okay. I never heard anything about Dennis being abusive to anybody. And I know, and like I say, a very, very close friend of mine worked with Dennis. In fact, when my friend retired, Dennis spoke at his retirement. He gave the, I forget what they call it, like a speech when my friend yeah. retired. Eulogy. And he sat at a table right right behind us. With all, with, he was with all policemen. I wasn't. Yeah. And yeah, he knew a lot of people, but everybody in Chicago, everybody knows everybody. Yeah. It's just the way it is. Yeah. It's just the way it is. It, it, 
that's how it was done back then. Sure. There, you were from an Italian neighborhood, and there's a wise guy in the neighborhood, and there's a policeman in the neighborhood. That yeah. don't mean they're connected. Some guys are, some guys aren't. Dennis, I firmly believe he was not anything like that. Now, you may hear other stories, but everybody's got stories, you know what I mean, and opinions. Sure. But my opinion of Dennis from knowing him, like I said, I went out to dinner with him, yeah. class act, uh, and, and I know guys he arrested, you know what I mean? And yeah. So, I mean, that's Dennis was a, he was a policeman. That's what he was. He was a policeman. He got lucky. I shouldn't say he got lucky becoming an actor because he, he worked real hard to become an actor. Uh -huh. Dennis, he, he did neighborhood playhouses. Mm -hmm. You know, he worked he worked hard to get where he was at. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, they, that's the Dennis I know, Adam and Red. That's the Dennis I know. They say uh, luck is opportunity and preparedness meeting. Right. And if you're and Dennis, prepared uh, and it, it arises, hey, you know, that's not luck. The guy who didn't prepare is never going to get lucky. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Dennis prepared for his future. You know what I mean? Dennis worked hard. And he wasn't from the pitch, the Grand Avenue pitch. Maybe they called his neighborhood a pitch. But they call we always thought his neighborhood was like the Sicilian uh, neighborhood. You know, Norton Wells and, right. and that neighborhood there. They, they were uh, you know, that was an old Italian neighborhood, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think now you can't afford to even be in that neighborhood. I think what they said was on the show Crime Story, he would say that he was from the patch. His character on the show is yeah, what they were saying. Okay. But yeah. Oh, on the show, yeah, I think yeah, on the yeah. Crime Story is what they said on the is what I read in the comments when I said that. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. But Joe, thanks for giving us uh, that that um, that insight because that's that is much different. You hear so many people with different stories about well, this guy was this way or that guy was that way, and you know. Uh, uh, I worked with the uh, we met met uh, Michael Jordan and the guy who didn't tip anything. You know, you hear all these crazy stories about celebrities. How, what one of them is true? You know, I mean, I, I'm gonna call in from time to time and I'll give input and I'll be on your show but, anytime. You know, but 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 I but I'll only say the truth. I'm not gonna. Mm -hmm. You know, if I thought bad of Dennis, I wouldn't say anything at all. Right. You know? Or I I just wouldn't say anything at all. I mean, and he's dead now, Dennis, so I could if I wanted to, but he yeah. but he wasn't a bad guy. He was a good guy, and he was a policeman. That's what he was, and he got, like I say, well, lucky, but he worked hard to get where he was at to be an actor. Okay. You know? Awesome. Okay. Thank and uh, I just, I'm glad you accepted the call so oh. I could tell you my opinion of Dennis. I'm, that's what we're all about, right? We can argue right. the uh, opinions and, and the facts, and uh, we always learn new things. And, and I'm going to be honest. A good man. Nice man. Cool. Awesome. Okay, pal. Thank you very much, Joe. Okay, bye, guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. See yous. See yous. You hear that, Red? See yous. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I so love it. Young. Somebody from <laughs> straight up, you know. Oh, <laughs> uh, not use, yes, red. Okay, so back, I'm sorry. I, I, I had a question the... for Joe. I had a question yeah. for Joe. I'm sorry. I didn't, and uh, uh, what's the question? Well, my question was: Did he was he aware of the fact that Dennis planted evidence? Sometimes he planted evidence. Um. Um. Well, 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 I think he did answer that because he said from what he knew of him, he didn't do anything like that. Okay. But you, you know what, Red? I think that, that, that the question, though, that I asked Joe kind of covered that because cops were different back in those days. Cops oh, yeah. were able to do things, <laughs> and it was considered normal, right? I mean, you the cop wanted to get a confession out of somebody. You know, and they put him under the light a little bit, knock him in the freaking uh, testicles with a cattle prong, and then hit him in the head with a it phone book. Completely acceptable, I guess. Hang him out did, the window. It didn't. It didn't happen that bad with Dennis, but Dennis was quick with the hand to give you a slap. Yeah, that's what I mean. So I think that the standards have changed from what oh, yeah. it was like back then to now. So whatever would have been, you know, considered. Uh, well, 
the thing that bugs me about Dennis is when he was alive, um, Paul Pansko came to work for me. He, we got him out of um, um, the prison up there, uh, Sandstone, uh, Minnesota. And okay. um, he actually went to uh, Reed and Associates and took a polygraph because okay. Dennis Reno went before the grand jury and mm -hmm. said that he was carrying guns and he was on parole. And when he arrested him and he violated his parole, um, the polygraph came out clean. I mean, very clean. It came out very good. And Reed is very good. Dennis wouldn't take a polygraph. He said, I'm a police officer. I don't have to. Okay. Do I believe peanuts? Yeah, because peanuts never beefed on anybody at that time. He wasn't beefing about cops. He said, hey, you take a slap, you take a slap, big deal. But going to prison for the rest of your life because somebody doesn't like you or they can't catch you, so they plant evidence, that's not right. And I believed him. Okay. I mean, it's what you heard. It's, you know, it's again, it's, it's uh, they call that hearsay. Yes, it was hearsay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I love this comment here somebody's put up. Are you saying all Italians look the same, Adam? <laughs> no, oh. that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying that these three particular guys look very similar, in my opinion. And if I have to make that point, I will. So this is what Dennis Farina looks like. This is what Frank Vincent looks like. And this is what Bobby Lucchetti looks like. Oops. So there's Frank or Dennis Farina. There's Frank Vincent. And the guy on the right, the guy on the right here is uh, Bobby Lucchetti. See, they all look very, very similar. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> they do. They have that same and the same salt and pepper hair. And they have, you know, so they look very, very similar. That's So that's all I'm saying is that they're very similar looking, Red. And... <laughs> That neighborhood, that neighborhood, Adam, Adam was St. Michael's. St. Michael's Church was right down the street from hold me. On, hold on one second. Royal, do you know anything about Dennis Farina? He became an actor. Okay. So he was a cop and he became an actor. That's what Royal knows about him. Crime Story. He did the TV show Crime Story in Chicago. Yeah, there you go. This is the guy I shoot bugs with, Red. We're live yeah. right now. Roy, you're on. How you on doing, Roy? Oh, hello, everybody. <laughs> Royal is a uh, engineer. That's what he does. Mechanical engineer. He's the smartest guy I know, besides Scott H. Because Scott H. builds airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> Royal knows how they fly, though. What makes them fly? Anyway, <laughs> we shooting bugs later. Uh, we are shooting bugs later. Got to save the universe. All right, man. See you then. <laughs> okay. Bye, bye. All right. That so, neighborhood was Italian. As a matter of fact, the, the, when I first rented that, that store, it was mm -hmm. by, from a man by the name of uh, Sam Napaderno. And he'd been there since the 30s <coughs> or 20s. He'd been there a long time. And it was all Italian at one time. Okay. Uh, JW, cops got away with a lot of corruption in the 70s. It's, yeah, no, no, no question about that, you know. And, and you know... Everybody has an opinion, and everybody, you know, I mean, I could say so and so is a nice person. I met him one time. Maybe, yeah. like Bobby Bag of Donuts said, no offense to Joe, but meeting somebody once doesn't convince me that they're a nice guy. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. You know, I'm here. The, um, what? Uh, Jim Magnifici, the only thing I could say. That came close to improperly was a hundred mile an hour chase while riding with my FTO, and we lost our light bar covering. Oh my god, we caught the guy, and it was break and bounce off the cage back. Break and bounce off the cage back. We caught the guy, it was break. The guy was in the back seat, in the back, they're, they're bouncing him off the cage, cage car, and he break. just oh, stand on the brakes. That's all. That was very common back in those days. I don't sit him in the cage. Jim was a cop. Okay. So as a retired Chicago, let's talk. Let's, let's hear for some cops. Michael Graham, thank you guys for chiming in. As a retired Chicago police officer, before and after body cameras and camera phones, 
Sometimes people deserve to crack to maintain your dominance. <clears throat> now the balls have been cut off of the police. It's true. It's like it's like Police Academy, the, the movie. Remember the little girl, the short little girl? Excuse me, can you come over here, please? Excuse me, would you please get in line? Excuse me. Right? Remember that scene? And then yeah. the video, yeah, right, yeah, right? Well, look, that's what's going on right now. Oh, we can't not hire this person because they aren't tall enough. We can't hire this person because they're not this. We can't hire this person because... So, so you end up... Because I guess cops, when you used to hire police officers and firemen, they got big dudes like me. They were like, oh, this guy would be a good fireman. He could pick some shit up and carry it. Or this guy can knock some shit guys around, you know, keep them in line. Good correctional officer. Now... What is it now, Red? What is what? What's what are we doing as a society? First of all, we don't have the same kind of personnel because back in that day, another thing to add to your your story, Adam, is that if you were a Vietnam vet, you were automatically guaranteed on the job. They wanted people comp. They if you're in the Marine Corps or anything, bang, you were on the job. They took your application. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one of my one of my one of my buddies out here in Vegas was a cop, and he did came back from Nam and boop right into the big guy too, which he said it was lucky because he had to build bridges when he was over there. He didn't have to go out in the ship, you know. They were like carry logs and build bridges. Okay, yes, sir. I'll stay right here building this bridge. You guys go out there and yeah, I, I shit man, I you know, yeah. Anyway, uh, my grandson's other grandpa. Whoa, hold on, Van, Van Basterman. I gotta, I gotta process this. My grandson's other grandpa was a thirty-year cop in Tennessee, six five two ninety. Holy shit, that's a big guy. That's bigger mm. than me. Yeah, the size is intimidating itself. Well, yeah, of course. I bet you nobody gave him any lip. <laughs> <laughs> You should have seen the cops in Chicago Heights back in the 60s. I'll bet you. I'll bet you they were because that's what they, you know. Yeah, government affirmative action programs have destroyed the police departments and the military. Yeah. You know what? I, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it and to come out the wrong way, but I think you're right, JW. <laughs> I think you said it for me. <laughs> Bobby Bag of Donuts. My favorite saying is from Mike Tyson. Everybody's a gangster till they get punched in the face. <laughs> that's I true, love too. It. I love it. That's that's so funny. Um, Julie M., when I became a firefighter, oh, shit, we got a girl firefighter. She was a paramedic. Okay. I had to pass the same physical tests that the men did, and I wanted it that way. Good for you, Julie M. I, I think... If, as long as, as long as you can pass the tests and you can do the job, great. But my father was a fireman. <laughs> Let me throw this in there too, on that same note. And I remember when the first female firefighter was hired on the department in Calumet City. Mm. My father was not exact. He was very opinionated about this. Okay, <laughs> and here's what he said. No. No, I'm just going to tell you what my dad told me, okay? It's just coming from my father, who's, bless his soul. So he was very opinionated. He was a very opinionated man. I would never talk shit about my dad, okay? But he was very opinionated. And what he said was, she couldn't do the job because, and, 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 and hear me out on this, because he was very opinionated. There was a guy the fire department had to roll off the, when the alarm went off and they had to go out in the truck, this dude had to roll off the couch onto his hands and knees and then had to use the table to get up off the floor. Okay. He was in that bad a shape. The man couldn't get up off the couch without getting on his hands and knees and lifting himself. up. He shouldn't have been there at the fire department. They should have shit canned his ass. Okay. He should have been shit canned. But at the time there weren't the physical tests required. No PFT so test. Came up. He said that the tests at first, when they first implemented them, wouldn't have been passable by half that crew. 
So they had to lower the standards on the tests so that they wouldn't lose half the crew when they implemented them. And therefore, the first female was able to get on. That's what I, that's what I, what he was, he was upset about it. Now, he grew up in a different time and, you know, whatnot. But I say if you can pass the test, you should be able to be on. But are the tests at the right level is the question. Some say that they lowered the bar on CPD, Chicago Police Department, when the females yeah. came on, when the females got on the job. Um, I think, I don't know if they did or not, but I believe that, um, I told you about Pat Foster, didn't I? Patricia Foster. She was a um, very well, she was the first police woman to ever kill somebody in the line of duty. And it happened right at Evergreen and, uh, and Wells. By the school yard there. Uh, what happened was, do you want to hear about it? Yeah. She um, was stopped by, she was uh, training, in training at the time with Kenny Lunsford. And um, she used to keep her hair all underneath her cap and everything. And some girl came by, um, Afro-American girl from uh, the projects. And she said, uh, my boyfriend's going to kill me. She was crying and everything. And Kenny Lunsford's talking to her. And the guy starts walking away because they pointed to him. And uh, she said um, that I watched this happen. The guy turned around. And he had a, a black trench coat on. It was kind of cool out. And when he turned around, he had a shotgun underneath his trench coat. And she drew her weapon and fired one shot, hit him mass center in the chest he flopped over dead that was it but the the weapon went off the shotgun went off and it, it ricocheted off the um um uh, asphalt and she got some bbs and things like that or whatever she did and she had to go to the hospital and i felt sorry for her but she they were saying all they had nicknames for her like uh jane wayne they called her jane wayne because <laughs> she killed somebody in the line of duty and yeah. it, she had a stigma on her then, but she had respect to him. Yeah. She had a lot of respect because she could do the man's job. Kenny yeah. said to me at the time, he said, I was lucky. I, she was a training, um, a trainee. He was a training officer. And he says, I was lucky she was that good because if she had been, I'd have been too late. And we'd have saved been dead. Her ass. Yeah, saved yeah. his ass. Yeah. So um, let's let's read some comments. Julie, I'm thank you for your service. And um, that's awesome that uh, that you did uh, that you were the first on your department um, Two thumbs up. Oh, right. Speaking of thumbs, hit the like button, everybody. <laughs> Don't forget to do that. <laughs> and if you're new here and you're just coming in, um, I run the Vegas mob tour out here in Las Vegas. And uh, Red wrote the book. Nobody cares. And what I did about it. And if you haven't gotten his book, you should definitely get his book. Uh, very interesting stories. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're going to be over on his channel after we're done uh, here on Mob Vlog. But we have this is a very interesting uh, topic today, Red. And I think everybody is uh, chiming in, uh, wants to be heard about it. Uh, Scott H., I agree. They neutered the cops nowadays. Uh, Marquette Gloves. Nowadays, the cops ask you your pronouns first and then your ID. Can you imagine it? Getting pulled over. Woo, 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 woo. No. Sir, no. Uh, sir, what, uh, what's your pronoun? Uh, what what should I call you? But are you fucking serious? <laughs> Sorry. Really? Come, come on. Hey, get out of it's the car. Not that I, it's not like that where I live, so I can't really tell oh you. Chicago God. is well, you gone. Know, you, you live down there in uh, the panhandle. <laughs> a, little, a little twang in the voices down there. <laughs> right? Red, you with me, Red? Did I lose you, Red? Hey, Red, Red, hello, Red. Yo, Red. Oh my God! Yo. Wow! Holy shit! I'm gonna have to go back and cut that part out right there. Red just went <laughs> gone. Whoo, <laughs> gone. <laughs> just lost it like that. I felt for like while. Stewie. I felt like Stewie on Family Guy. Mom, mom, mama, mama. Mommy, mommy, mommy. <laughs> red, red, red. What the hell? All right. So, um, Joe Colella yes. said Penis became an informant. Yes, he did. He did. Right. He became an informant. Yes. And was he the one who was on um, Jenny Jones? That's correct. 
Yeah. <laughs> he was on right. Jenny Jones. Was, We're going to get to that he story. He challenged him on TV. He challenged yep. Dennis for the polygraph. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He, Dennis, he, sorry, he challenged who? Dennis Farina to take a polygraph. He said, I took Rick. mine. I took mine. I passed. What did he want him to take a polygraph about? Uh, peanuts, uh, and I believe he did because he passed his polygraph. He went to John Reed and Associates. Um, sure. He said Dennis um, planted guns on the robbery scene and and blamed him. And he was on parole at the time. Well, sent him right oh. back to prison. He went right back to Sandstone Prison. So, so, and then went to prison for life, basically. Well, he got out. I helped him. I worked with him. He got out and uh, he flipped on... Uh, uh, Duke Basil, okay, and he flipped on Lenny Patrick, and okay. Lenny Patrick. They all flipped. They rolled. They kept rolling people My because God. Peanuts. You know, he did not do the rest find, of his life in prison. We had to find that clip of him of Peanuts on Jenny Jones. You don't have that, do you? No, I used to have the uncut version because uh, I had it on VHS uncut. Yeah, and Peanuts saw me several times in Florida here, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I don't know. I didn't have any problems with him. Okay. He worked with Frank a few times, but he never rolled on Frank. Um, Jim Magnifici. Oh, I forgot about the sap slap on a couple of teenagers who were burglarizing cars by a lieutenant when I was doing my internship. I got called to the chief's office, and I later got hired and worked for that lieutenant. Wow. See, it was it was different. Rhonda, Julie uh, makes Wonder Woman look like a snowflake. <laughs> Dave Malinska. Um, in the early 70s, I got on the list to take the police exam and took it six years before a test was given. Now they can't get anyone to apply. Yeah, nobody wants to apply to become a cop nowadays. No. Oh, my God. Who They're wants to get drove. on? And then you're like, oh, yeah, I'll volunteer for that job. They're leaving in droves. They're coming down here to Florida. They have a signing bonus if you have any, any law enforcement uh, experience, and they're coming yeah. down here. Yeah, they want to go. They don't want to. They don't want to uh, police the inner city. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No way. I'll I'll police the country road. Thank you very much. Well, yeah. Tampa isn't exactly country roads. It's a little rough there. Yeah. That's because people are afraid they'll go to prison for doing their job, Mr. Hoffman. You're exactly right. They're going to go to prison for doing their job. It's unbelievable. Um, Julie M. had to carry men over my back off a roof and down a ladder. Damn. Okay. I mean, that, that's, that should be a requirement, too, for a firefighter. Yes. Yeah. Because that's the job. I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> You get people out of burning buildings and then getting the fire out. First, save the lives, then put out the fire and contain it. Uh, Big Mo, hey, Adam Red, going on 26 years and never had to tune anyone up. But where are you? Where are you? Is that Big Mo from um, from uh, Iowa? Yes. Live Iowa, right? It is. Okay. Just want to be. Yeah. He um, I've met. I've met him. But he's, he's a good sized man. <laughs> Oh, dude, he's a tree trunk, man. He may not have a lot of height, but he's a tree trunk. I mean, he is. He really is. Yeah. Salute, Big Mo. I don't have him handy right now. I'd put him up there right now. Um, yeah, back to the comments. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> True. Here's just, a good just, example of it right here. Tree top. Tree top. Hey, a friend just got hired at FHP. Down your way, Red. Florida yeah, Highway Florida Patrol. Highway Patrol. Nice. They um, are hiring. You're welcome, uh, Mo. Sean Pender, there's a billboard on the Kennedy Expressway to apply for Fort Lauderdale Police Department. I'll be damned. There I'll is. be damned. Hey, I just heard this today from a, from a friend of mine. Texas, in their laws, they have to uh, advertise their welfare and assistance programs. Okay, but it doesn't say in the law where they have to advertise them. So they take out billboard spaces and on buses in Philadelphia, 
of where to get your welfare and how to game the system in Texas. I thought that's hilarious. <laughs> true. Yeah, I don't know if it's, it's true. true. That's what he told me, but that's crazy. It's true. Yes. Uh, Casper, in Chicago, it's a free for all. People drive like nutcases, and downtown is worse than some neighborhoods. It's the same in Vegas right now, just so you know, Casper. Like, I drive around this town for a living. I watch I, I, I don't know how many things that I've caught on my dash cam, but it is they are getting so bold, and the cops don't pull them over, and they – I'm for the cameras. I'm already, I'm for the cameras out here. Like they have in Chicago. I, I am. But I, you guys have them in Chicago and you're still telling me it's crazy. Like they don't care about the tickets. There's like, ah, oh, throw the ticket away. Forget it. Yeah. They mailed me another ticket. I'll throw it away. I, it's unreal. And I guess, like, you know, unless they pull you over, I mean, and they aren't pulling anybody over because they don't want to, because they're afraid they're going to lose their job if they pull you over, because you might be the wrong person. The wrong race, the wrong sex, the wrong whatever. I got to ask the pronouns before I walk up to the car. <laughs> Mr. Hoffman, FD, I was at 87th and Halsted during the looting. They were driving 80 in a 30 and 35 in opposite lanes. It hasn't, and it hasn't stopped. Yeah? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Not good. All that construction's a mess down in Vegas, too, Robert. Yeah, they're bringing in the Formula F1 racing. It's going to go all around Vegas and up and down the streets. They're going to repave all these streets. Do you know what rooms are starting at that weekend in November at the win, Fred? No, I didn't know. $1 million a night to stay at the win here in town. At the win down where I stayed? You at stayed the at the downtown? Palazzo. Just as nice. Yeah, $1 million a night. You know how many rooms are there? It's like 6,000 rooms there now. Now, wait a second. Who can afford a million dollars a night? You know who's coming to Vegas that weekend? All of Dubai. That's who's coming to town. The sheiks, the princes, the because they like to watch those race cars run the track and burn all that oil. They can afford it. Get some excited. They're like, oh, dollar signs is we're burning up that oil. (laughs) Send them more money. All right, um, Adam, they're all coming from Chicago. Yeah, it's true. People have no self-discipline. Yeah? Scott H. In Philadelphia, gangs on off-road vehicles take over the streets at night. No cops around. I saw it myself. What? What? Like pure anarchy going on, breaking out at night? On four-wheelers, just running around and what, breaking into stores? doing What are they doing? Um they're just running around on four-wheelers up and down the streets. I don't know. People drive like nutcases here in Iowa, too. There was a guy weaving in and out of traffic and flipping everyone off the other day. Really? People are just oh, losing yeah. their minds. I was just saying, I was going down. We got a 35-mile-an-hour road in town. It's just two lanes. It's a slow road. I like driving it. There's a guy, there's a middle lane for people who want to turn. The guy came racing past <laughs> up on that lane. Then there's parking spots on the right. Another guy passed me up the right side. I'm going, what? What the fuck is going on? Seriously. Used to say when I, you know, you, you know, when I was a kid, uh, if I was, my, you'd hear my parents, uncles, be older. If I wish I was a cop, I'd pull that guy over right now. Okay. I used to hear people say, "I wish I was a cop so I could pull him over." Not anymore. People aren't wishing that anymore. <laughs> I wish I was a cop. Uh, uh-uh. uh. I don't want to do that job. <laughs> No. Media brainwashing society into all this PC stuff. It's true. Um, it's true. And the owners of the Formula One cars too. Yeah, the people who own the Formula One cars, they can uh they can pay for it. Chris Edmondson, ten thousand dollar per person for VIP tickets. So it depends wow. on where you're sitting too, where you're gonna be sitting. They're building boxes over the Bellagio fountains, it's gonna be pretty wild. Uh, Michael Graham, I haven't written a single traffic ticket in the last 15 years of my career. We were shorthanded and way too busy with way more serious crimes like shootings and carjackings. No shit. Yeah, that's what you know, I was asking my my, my uh, a cop buddy. I said, why, why aren't people getting pulled over out here? Tinted windshields. You can't see in their car at all. Tinted windshields and limo tints on the side window. I pull up to an intersection, a four-way stop. I'll sit there if they have the tints like that. I'll sit there and I'll wait. 
Because I don't know if they're looking at me or not. And I'm not going and putting my vehicle and people of my souls that are, I'm responsible for in harm's way. And when they finally roll their window down and start waving at me, like, go, you know, no, not until I can see your face. Idiots. Big Mo. Hey, Adam, I'll be back in Vegas in June. I'm bringing my 21-year-old twins there for the first time. My daughter shares my mob fascination, so I may bring her on a tour. Please do, Big Mo. Please do. And uh, be sure to call when you book. So we'll get you on a day. I'll give you a, a returning customer discount on top of the mob blog discount. And uh, if you want to do the crime tour, I think you'd find it fascinating. I built that for people just like you. Because you get it's good too. Mo, you'll it's like a it. Damn good, dude. It's a damn good. I want to say it's better than the mob tour, but I I I can't say that yet. But it it's 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 as good. It it really is. Um, I had a lot of fun building it. Okay, one million for the crime tour that week. That's right, Luminous Grin. Million dollars. <laughs> Thank you for the crime tour. <laughs> hey, Eddie, you want to go on the crime tour while you're here from Dubai? The tickets are a million bucks. I'm going to discount them to speak Arabic. Half a million. You got to have parties of four or more. Oh, see how I just got to two million? See how I did that, Red? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, pure take, anarchy, take right? In the, take that one. I'm sorry, what? Go ahead, Red. Big Mo said he was going to do that tour, the crime tour. Oh, oh, okay. Um, awesome. Yes. So that, that'll be fun. Uh, Minneapolis has no police force anymore either stay away from downtown after dark neon vacation warns and casper it's like mad max with people on their atvs i used to drive semis on ashland in 59 unbelievable right are we at end times oh here we go co siri co siri are we in end times but worry not for the lord reigneth let the earth rejoice Salve Regina. Okay. Um, okay. Interesting. The end times are near. Um, mm. Mr. Hoffman, FD. 59th and Ashland's Rough. One of the busiest firehouses is right there. Uh, it's always been rough there. <laughs> smash the like button, guys. Please hit the like button. Yeah, we, yeah, you guys, you guys aren't hitting the like buttons. And if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Okay, Please. Leanne's out there and she's rolling along, seeing crazy shit on the highway all day. Yeah, when you're driving for a living, you're gonna see a lot of crazy shit. It just, it's getting, it's really nuts, Mister Hoffman. That's because Lori Lightfoot says there's just bored kids who've been deprived of the opportunity in their own community. See, so yeah. Um, Adam, buy a camel. Buy a camel. Uh -huh. Red, you should do bikini tours in Florida. I'll come down there, man. I'll host them. I'll even wear my bikini. <laughs> Roger she, said right after that, she said, Red in a bikini? She's got a question mark. <laughs> red in a bikini. Oh, Michael Graham, judging by my weight. When I step on my scale, my mob fascination apparently begins and ends with an Italian beef sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> Spirit of the Justice Sigma, all this complaining is getting depressing. Oh, <laughs> shit, right? Yes, please hit the thumbs up. Remember, Frank warned you about the thumbs, everybody. Treetop, no thanks. It is it is anything Come to on, do with guys. That of course, Julie's laughing. Why wouldn't she be? Um, it's it's the quote. <laughs> It's the car video games nowadays. They all think that there's a reset button. I I don't know, but I honestly look, man, you know, violent video games, Tim. I play video games. I'm a I'm a gamer, man. I'm I'm a diehard dude to the the I have yeah, a yeah, he's not violent. He's not um, violent. No, I play the most violent shit, man, but I don't go out there and drive like a nut or go out there and do a mass shooting. Come on. You know, it's just, it's a fucking game. It's it's a game. It's not real. So I don't think that that's what's causing it. Grand Theft Auto. I don't think that's the causing. What's what's happening is, 
is that, and I'm not going to say something see something do because then you're going to go, oh, you're a racist. So no, what I'm saying is, is one person sees somebody else do it and they go, oh, they got away with it. I'm in a hurry too. And then they do it at the next light and they get away with it once and they go, ah, I got away with it. I'm just going to do it again. Anytime it's close, I'm just going to do it because I can get away with it. That's what I think's going on. So Adam, you're not 15 either. I know I'm not 15, but I played them when I was 15. Play them now. And it's, you know, uh. anyway, no fathers in the home, Adam. Hundred, I totally agree with you, Treetop. That is a problem. Lack of dads. Yeah, I, I really, really agree with you. Drive like hell and you'll get there. Yeah. Part of the desensitization of violence. I guess so. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're desensitizing the violence. Hey, you know what else they try to desensitize? The use of the word, of the F word. And the other day, Red and I, the other day, Red and I, we went live. We got we got off for about 12 minutes listening to how many times they said the word F in the movie Casino. And some of you were like, Adam, I'm not approved, but that's a little over the top. Treetop said that. And uh, I, I did it because I thought it'd be fun to count the words to actually see if they were all in there and the way to do it. I, I was like, oh, I'll make a video of it. And then, and then I sat there for two days cutting this video up. And I went, well, I want somebody else to see it besides just me, you know. And so I put it up and then YouTube's like, no, no, we can't post that. We're going to block it in the countries and all this. And I went, this is bullshit, Red. I so I said, let's make a reaction video because a reaction video, well, they can't screw with that. I mean, we're reacting to a video that I made of it. 12 and a half minutes in, feed went dead. That's right. <laughs> William Kirchmayer, I am a YouTube felon. That is oh, that is totally true, yes. Yep, I got myself in trouble. I didn't get any copyright strike or anything, but they, they shut the feed down. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. So, <laughs> yeah. Hit that like a, button, folks. Yeah, hit the like button, everybody. And hey, guys, uh, it's been fun, but all good things do come to an end and that's today's episode. So we're going to be over on Red's channel in a few minutes. And uh, if you haven't heard, the uh, Vegas Mob Tour is back. It's open. And it's, you can, yeah. And Red, when you tell these stories, have a great day. Thank you. I'll see All you right. in a few. When you tell these stories to me, man, it's like this. Well, you said you drink beer, you eat bacon, I'm and help you smoke cigarettes, and you outlive most of the experts. Yeah. I thought maybe there's a moral. No, there ain't no moral. I just like that story. That's all.